guys, how are you doing today? I wanted to give you an update and a little bit of care info on my philodendron splendid. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Her leaves are kind of like a micans, but they get bigger. And look at the back. Look at the back of the color of these leaves. Can you see those? They're gorgeous. They got that beautiful bronzy color. Absolutely gorgeous. Now I got her a couple months ago and it was just this leaf right here. It was a rooted cutting and she has grown one, two, three, four, and then there's another new one right here. I put her on this pole so she had something to grow up onto because they are a climber. Gorgeous. Love this plant. I cannot wait for the leaves to just keep getting bigger and bigger, but right now it's still a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Now this is a hybrid between the Viracosum and the Melanochrysum and you can definitely see that mine is taking on the Melanochrysum vibe which I love. That's great. Absolutely gorgeous. And the leaf color is very very dark with a light veining and then the backs are this beautiful bronzy color just like a melon of Chrysler. I, I love it. I was kind of hoping when I got it because I know when you get these they can take on more of a Viracosum vibe or the melon of Chrysler vibe. <laughs> I was really really hoping it would take on this melon of Chrysler vibe because I I mean I love my Viracosum don't get me wrong but I love my melon of Chrysler too and these big leaves are huge are absolutely gorgeous. Now this one has a little bit of damage right here on the leaf if you guys can see it. There's like a little tiny hole <laughs> right here. See it? I stuck my nail through it but it also got kind of wavy and wonky. I don't know why because the other one, well, I don't know, that one's kind of wavy too. But these all grew out pretty okay. But this newer, oh, oh, you can't see it. This newer growth coming right here. I think it's going to be an even bigger leaf than that one, I hope. And these do get a little bit bigger as they, uh, as they grow. Um, I find it to be a pretty easy plant to grow. I haven't had any issues with it, and it seems to be a fast grower. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. I know I say that all the time, and I keep saying it over and over in my video, but it, it is. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I love it. I love the dark green and the bronzy colors together. <laughs> But for the light, they, they really like to have a bright and direct light. You definitely don't want to have this in the sun at all because it will burn up. Now I grow mine under a grow light. I have a MERS Hydro light here in my plant room. And I, I've been growing her under that. In the beginning I was growing her in a south window um, about three-ish feet from a south window and she did really really well but when I started bringing plants in from my front porch and my back porch and stuff I moved her over and that was also when I put her up on this pole it, it's just a flat board with and then I wrapped um I was gonna say bamboo <laughs> I, I wrapped burlap around the pole and the roots grow and grab onto the burlap really well. So it'll just give her some stability. You can see she has air roots coming out. I don't, I can't tell if anything's latching onto it yet, but it's still a really young plant. 
just gorgeous. Um, so bright indirect light or a girl light, she would appreciate. I wait until about the, I have her in a plastic, I can't lift this up too high because I have it in a plastic pot. And I wait until it is about halfway dry before I water her. Um, I don't, I don't let it dry all the way out. And I have it in a really well draining soil. I have it about 50-50 soil and perlite. Um, and she seems to be doing very, very well in there in that mix. So it's pretty much what I use for all of my plants unless I have a little bit more of a moisture loving plant my, like my anthuriums. Um, I add a little bit of spag to that mix. Um, I feed her just about every time that I water with fish emulsion, but I'm sure once a month would be perfectly fine. But philodendrons really like to eat, so you want to make sure you're feeding them properly. Uh, I keep my humidity <coughs> about 50 to 60 percent for her, and so far so good. She loves it. I, I've not had any um, issues with, you know, like the leaves leaf tips or the edges or anything drying up so she's fine with that uh, the temperature the temperature in my plant room of course we're coming in the winter it it does not stay stable so you know it fluctuates back and forth back and forth a lot but I definitely you definitely would not want to have her in a cold room and the leaves, by the way, are very velvety, just like a micans. Um, it's not fuzzy. It's just soft, like a micans leaf. So, you know, kind of a velvety leaf. Um, these leaves obviously do get bigger. I will try to put a picture up of a mature, um, splendid here. So you can see they get very big. Um, pests, I have not had any pests on this, but I have read a lot and been watched a few videos that said the one great thing about when you have a hybrid plant like this and it breeds like the Viracosum and the Melanochrysum, both, um, have in my care, I, I fight spider mites all the time with those two plants. And supposedly this one is not going to be such a pest magnet, but we will see. Um, if it does, I will just use my neem oil on it like I do my varicosum and my melanochrysum and a few others that I have that get spider mites every once in a while. But... I use neem oil on those plants that are pest prone about once a month and it seems to work for me to keep them at bay. I spray all the leaves down front and back, the stems, the pole, I try to get the pole and then I do a drench with, with my neem oil which is just watering. I dump it into uh, my soil mixture. That way if there's anything in the soil, hopefully it will kill it. I would say uh, repot is when this plant gets root bound. Go ahead and give it a repot. Go up a pot, pot size. Um, <coughs> this plant will always need a climbing pole to be on. So you, you want to make sure that if you get this plant, <coughs> you're able to have it on a pole to climb because she is a climber. Um, propagation. I have not propagated this plant yet, but I'm assuming it's it's a pretty easy propagation because um, 
the mill and the Chrysler and the bare coastal are both very, very easy to propagate. Um, I'm assuming you could do moss, you could do perlite water, air layering would be a great idea for this plant. And which, if I ever go to propagate it, that is what I will probably do is air layering. I love the air layering method. I do not like to have a bunch of propagated propagations sitting all over. Um, I'm done with that. I don't have the room for it. Um, now, if it was a, you know, emergency and I needed to cut the plant, I would do that. But my way from now on is going to be air layering. I enjoy it. It's much, much easier to take care of. And um, you don't have 50 million propagations all over. I know a lot of people love to propagate. That's fine. Do you. But I don't. I do not have the room for propagations sitting all over the place. It just drives me bonkers. Um, but supposedly the leaves on this um, can get bigger than the, the varicosum. And now my varicosum leaves aren't huge, so I have nothing to compare that to. My varicosum has always been a struggle. I think I finally got her on the right track now because I propagated it and then her, now her leaves are getting bigger and bigger for me. So, we'll see. Um, you don't want to overwater her. You want to make sure you have her at a happy medium like I talked about before, about halfway. Get her about halfway dry and then give her a nice drink. Um, and I think she'll do fine. But if you overwater this, you'll get yellowing leaves. You could get fungal issues, root rot, um, just like any other plant. You just want to be careful of watering. I usually just pick mine up and I can tell it needs water. But I've really been enjoying this plant. I, I love watching her grow. She was just a baby when I got her. Like I said, she only had this one little leaf when I got her. She might have this one, too. I don't really remember. I'll try to find a picture. Um, I did do an unboxing video of this, so you can go back and watch my unboxing video of her. I'm really excited about this new growth. I cannot wait to see the next leaf come out. I think as it gets taller and the leaves get bigger, I will probably air layer her again. Uh, that way I can keep the bigger leaves going up my pole and I'll, I'll just pot the two plants together. But, um, very excited about this plant. I have no idea what I'm going to do with her when she gets big and massive and beautiful. But I will figure it out. I seem to figure it out, but... <laughs> oh, brother. And yeah, she seems to be a really easy grower. I, I haven't had any issues with her. Um, you could probably even grow her in like an east window or something. I don't really know. You just, you want, I mean, unless you don't mind the smaller leaves, like maybe this size, you know, you could probably keep her in a little bit lower light situation, but, um... And I think, I think she would do okay if you want to keep her a little bit more on the smaller side and you don't want the big, huge, massive leaves and you want to slow her growth down a little bit. So, pretty much like any other plant, lower light situation will keep her from growing like crazy and getting massive quickly. So, but a beautiful plant. I love the back of the leaves. She's been kind of peeking around the corner because I have a west window um, right behind her. And then my grow light sits up above. And she's been peeking around to my west window. And I love that because then I can see her beautiful leaf color on the back. It, it, it's a lot like the Mykins and the Melanocrysum. I think I said she was taking on the Mykins earlier. I meant Melanocrysum if I did say that. She's looking... She's, she's taking on the attributes of the melanocrysum more than she is the varicosum so far. So, and I love that. The melanocrysum is beautiful. 
the Mykins is beautiful. It's the same color as the Mykins. I think that's why I was saying Mykins, but just gorgeous. So I don't mind her peeking around the corner because then I can see her beautiful, that color of, of her leaves. But I've been tying her back and soon I'll go ahead and tie her new growth back. I might move her so she kind of straightens herself up a little bit. Maybe I'll switch her out with another plant when I put her back. But it doesn't really matter. So I think I covered everything. Um, beautiful, beautiful plant if you get a chance to get it. I got her pretty cheap. Um, you know, as a small plant or even a, a, a cutting, you know, they're cheaper, but this plant really doesn't seem to be too expensive right now, so, um, at least not that I've seen, I haven't really been on searching, but yeah, if you guys get a chance to get this plant, either as a small plant or a large plant or a cutting, I would say go for it. She seems to be really easy growing. As you can see, gorgeous. And I think she would propagate super easy. So, alright guys, I am going to let you go and I will talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.